them all. This Bye. is the Brookline regular select board meeting, Wednesday, February 1st, 2023. Present are uh, select board members, Dot Maggio, Sanoga, Bruce Nello, Road Supervisor, Mark, uh, Everett, Mark Bills, and um, we have it. Um, Online, we have Back TV and uh, Guy Tanza is also present. Are there any changes to the Guy? Are you attending as a member of the public or a town officer? <laughs> that was a good question. It's quiet, Mr. Tanza. Guy? I'm a member of the town office. Okay, okay. so town clerk uh, Guy Tanza. Okay. Um, any changes to the agenda at this time? No, thanks for waiting. No problem. I'm glad you were able to make it. Yeah. Uh, members of the public, um, we have no scheduled members of the public nor any unscheduled members of the public at this time. Uh, review and approve minutes. I'm going to table the minutes from the regular meeting held on January 18, 2023 mm -hmm. until the next meeting. And we will take a look at, and you have there, Mr. Um, Bruce. Bruce, the uh, minutes from the special Brookline meeting that was originally scheduled for January 23rd, but had to be moved to a certain place, suspended to a certain place, time, and locate place, time, and date because of the power outages. And the meeting was held on January uh, 24th, at 6.30 at Town Hall once power was restored. Okay. Um, fairly, it was the, uh, I made a more, the only item on the uh, minutes were the approval of the warning and associated articles for wow. that. So as these minutes are here, I'll, since I wrote them, I'm not going to make the motion to approve them. So somebody- I make motion to approve the minutes from the special select board meeting held uh, Tuesday, January 24th at 6.30 PM at the town office. At Bruce, Bruce is gonna second it. Bruce seconded it. Okay. Okay, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving the minutes from the special select board meeting held on Tuesday, January 24th, uh, please signify by saying aye. 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 The motion passes. The minutes are accepted. I will send out the draft for that for, for posting. Thank you. Okay. Um, I just wanted to make a point, and a couple of you also saw the emails that went out. I put under new business. The ARPA resource meeting is an ARPA resource meeting and discussion with the state agencies and the uh, BDCC on Monday, February 6th um, in Wilmington and- Bellows Falls in the afternoon. Is that in Bellows Falls yeah, in the I'm afternoon? Going that's that. what they mean, the Oprah Opera House. Yeah, I'm going that one too. Is it a Zoom meeting or is it all in person? It's live. It's Why live, all right. So, if you, so um, the one on Monday, February 6th is 2.30 to 4.00. That's probably, I was thinking of Wilmington, but I, I didn't know where this one was when it said the Opera House, but that's Pebbles Falls. That's close. Yeah, to yeah. Mm -hmm. On Main Street, you know where the mm -hmm. Pebbles Falls Town Office is? Or the movie theater? I've been there once or mm -hmm. twice. Okay, well, the movie right, theater. So check with you on that. Yeah. It's about the same. Yeah. So that, at that place, the ARPA resource meeting and discussion with the agencies, it's about to talk about some additional ARPA infrastructure monies that is available to Wyndham County regions. Um, and so it's listening sessions and a roundtable discussions about uh, that we can attend. And so, um, Stan, you said you're going to attend it, and I I'd like to go as well just to hear what they mm -hmm. have to say. And we can bring back and be welcome to come as well. Yeah, I don't know if I can. Okay. Um, but we'll look at those words. ARPA resource meeting and discussion with state yeah, agencies. Before that, ARPA what? Resource. Not before that. ARPA, ARPA infrastructure. I'll bet that has to do with the infrastructure bill. Where do you see that was a, that was at the end of of twenty what were we in twenty twenty one that was passed by the by the feds. A joke out there. 
Right. It's an introduction and discussion about the state and ARPA infrastructure resources that are available in the Wyndham County region. Mm -hmm. And so this is what our re representative also sent out an email yeah, on. That. So, so we're up on that. Um, all right. The second thing under new business I wanted to point out came in the mail at the last month with the last select board meeting. Um, I am going to... I was thinking about attending it in person, but I also saw it's on Zoom, and it is the Wyndham County Sheriff's Office uh, meeting on February 9th from 10 to 12 at the Vermont EMS, EMS Academy located on Route 30, and it's a meeting to discuss the history needs of communities, services rendered by the County Sheriff's Office, opportunities about regional policing and costs associated. Um, at this time, we have no contract with the state police, nor do we have one with Wyndham. And, and there are some concerns about security and I thought it would be good to go. And I might actually put this out for residents to also attend or by Zoom. So um, I want you to know that, that that's also something that was under new business. Okay. Um, and the third thing under new business is, is meet with auditors. The auditors have provided us with our uh, uh, necessary documents for our town report. However, they would like to meet with us at some point um, to make sure that we, you know, just to make things a little bit easier going forward. You know, I was thinking, we always talked about October 31st, as, or, you know, we'll start, we'll start in October, November. We did that this year. I'm guessing we really should start in September and get all our numbers together. For the holidays. We 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 didn't actively really deal with numbers until sometime in November, December. Mm -hmm. right. And it appears to me from what I we went through, I went through the first time the whole thing, is that it really is dependent upon the budget numbers. So if that could be done in, in October, we'd have their statement in October or early November. That's what it looks like to me. Yeah, so we need to, the, the select board needs to plan the blood budgeting earlier. Now, we thought we were doing a good job, but it, yeah, it was too much down to the wire kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, so we probably should it's get our budget. Way all the time. I budget. you all could break getting it all together by January, but um, it just seems to, you know, there's always something else, always something else, always something else. Well, they did. Uh, I, I'm just as an observer, I'm in the participatory function, but I also am putting two and two together around me here. Right. Right. It, it yeah. looks like we wanted them to do their job earlier, but the fact of the matter is, until we've gotten them the numbers at the last minute, yeah, they right. can't finish up. Right. So the, 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 the issue seems to be if we ask them to, to do their preliminary paperwork, as, as Dot mentioned, they, they do look at a lot of the background paperwork and so forth, and we have the numbers for them, for them to evaluate and create a consolidated balance sheet, et cetera. It, it's okay, it's a walk in the daylight after that. It's, it's a simple, quick, and we have time to review yes. instead of last minute feeling pressed against the wall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. I think be, speaking with Sorry, the auditors would be a good good point for us to do. About the time we're putting the sand and salt, I uh, sand and salt stuff up for bed and the plowing in September someplace. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. in between yeah. Yeah. getting so ready for winter, <laughs> render RFP. Okay, it's time to do the budget. Yeah, yeah. you're September. It's, it's been three months past since the close of the year, so there should be no reason why we can't have mm -hmm. that done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I think live and learn. Mm. All right, the fourth thing under new business is the use of the OWL camera system for Zoom meetings. Uh, last month, last meeting, we had the, uh, uh, Steve set it up, and this month, uh, Stan was able to set it up. It's pretty much, like they said, plug and play once we figure out, you know, starting the meeting and connecting the, the systems. Um, we get it up on the TV. It's easy enough. We have it here on the laptop screen as well. Um, I, I, I'm more comfortable with it than I thought I was going to be. It's not that the machine is swirling around and, and going from one person to the next. It's, it seems to be a constant stream and it's an effective quality picture. Um, I would like to move forward and, uh, request information Stan, I think you already said you talked to Colin, request information on the actual purchasing procedure for this item. Um, it, if it's uh, 
within our purchase policy, which I didn't <laughs> bring with me tonight. Um, we don't have to put it out to bid. With, I think it's, I can't it's recall. It's either 1,000 or 1,500 where we don't have to put it out right. to bid. And I, I can't remember which one it is. Uh, earlier, uh, and and uh, the Steve, the last fellow here said it, it could be a thousand. If it's eleven hundred, we're looking at a thousand. It's different though. It's not a service. It's buying a product. It's so a product. Maybe it's right. a different thing than it's buying uh, a product. It, it may be a, under a different kind of setup. So I'll have to review the purchase policy on that, and we'll get an idea of of uh, the cost of it. So everybody's on the same page as far as yeah, yeah. Re researching this. Okay, go forward on purchasing the Owl camera system for future Zoom meetings. All right, the next thing we have on our old business is budget for 2324, uh, and um, which which was put together. Uh, thank you very much, Stan. I know how much work you put into working on this. And of course, David in, in setting up the uh, uh, the book for, for printing purposes. Um, is there anything, well, we just spoke well, for going forward. I think we need to start doing the, the select board needs to start to work on the budget numbers for the following year earlier in the season so that it's done, which would also mean that we really do have to have a cutoff for the appropriations, uh, like a that. solid cutoff, but a so we have to have a mm -hmm. rejection letter. Sorry, it came in, or the letter that goes out has you must have your appropriations in by this date, or it will cannot be considered. You're not paying it. Yeah. Oh, mark. It it was uh, if I can add this just as a little color to the scenario, uh, the last night before the day that it needed to go to David Jones. Uh, it was discovered that the fee for a administrative assistant was not in the right column. It was in the 2021 and the 2023 column instead of oh. 2024. So that was pointed out. I think Dot and I talked about it first and then based on the thought we I called Melissa. Oh, okay. But in the process of doing that, there were other things in the background, four, maybe five things, five things, could have been a little more than that, that Melissa was still working on. Uh -huh. So we must have spent at least probably another half hour, 40 minutes uh, talking about what was of concern. And I offered, since I have a lot of this information, the balance sheets, et cetera, on my home computer, if she would like to bounce something off me. Fortunately, she told me what it was she was concerned about and looking for. And I had to go back to prior minutes uh, where we had listed things out as to what we had received requests for and those that we did not. And we were to, we eliminated four of her concerns doing that because uh, she was concerned that she had sent things out and then someone here had changed things. And so she was trying to determine which was the last Official. accurate uh -huh. item to, yeah. to pursue. In the process of that, she had offered, which I hadn't, I don't think I saw on the consolidated balance sheet, there was an error in 2020, uh, the last fiscal year, 2021 or two? 2022, right? And, and, Three, four, and it was an amount of approximately $4,500. So we spent time going down the columns for each year in the municipal revenue area. And we discovered by doing that where the problem was. It just was one of those things that we had brought up at a select board meeting that hadn't resurfaced as an issue to check. Do you remember there was $1,060 for income, handled as income for the uh, uh, copying of the records or the reproduction of the records? That should not be an income account. And then secondly, appearing further down in the expense column. 
Uh, Melissa said that should be one account into which there's a balance. You got money coming right. in, money coming out, and it, it should not be handled as income. So that threw some calculations off uh -huh. and and helped her pinpoint where some of that error had occurred. So so even, even as good and tight as we tried to control things along the way, there still were those little, little things. And Dot brought one up today in an email that perhaps we all, one of us should have noticed. So we just... We had talked about it two, three times. It just didn't didn't, it. didn't get changed later on for one reason or another. Well, it's so this gives credence to starting at the end of September. There you go. Right. There you go. I and, think so. Yeah. Because yeah. once you get to the end of because I remember years ago, and probably was an auditor. It was about 1990. I remember her having to do it right after right right after New Year's. They were ready to go <laughs> and do do it right after New Year's. We haven't had that happen yet, correct? Right after New Year's, they were sitting down and do the books. Who's sitting down? The auditors, that's what yes. they did. Well, right, they did right, it. Right then, uh, yeah. after just after New Year's? Yeah. Oh, okay. They didn't do it until second week of July, January. Yeah, no, it was it was early. It was right after New Year's. So mm -hmm. I Usually that. during Christmas break. Yeah. Sam? One other thing. And for next year, so hopefully we'll, we'll actually start when we say we're hopefully to start, hopefully we'll start, is a line of a channel, defined channel of communication. Because I was under the assumption things were going one way. An auditor had mentioned that he had gotten stuff from someone who had not been involved in our conversations whatsoever. So my first thought was, well, how did that person get it? They haven't communicated with anybody I know. So I was wondering if someone else who had it had forwarded numbers to, to David. And it turns out because we're all in a rush, not to point out flaws, but the person that got that email saying this is the data, it was for a year ago and not the current data. Wow. So there were a number of con, con, uh, convoluted. convoluted items that my gut was in a twist. And I was thinking, oh my God, there's stuff flying around here. I have no idea where it came, what it went from. Uh -huh. Somebody should have a, a, a an idea of what the channel is so that if somebody says, "Well, I got it from here," and not, well, if you did, you shouldn't have, and 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 either want to compare that with what I'm giving you now, or or you know, why am I worried about this other flow over here when I don't need to be because something has already been arranged? You know, no, this was disorganized. I think that was that threw a monkey wrench into it all, but it all got solved. Yeah, it it, it was a old a stale email that was pulled up uh, around a, a, almost exactly one year January date. And uh, it, it, was, it was an error. And I noticed it when I looked, when I pulled up the question from, I called Heidi up about it. All okay. right, but other than that, so starting it earlier, um, I think that's, the, the, it looks it looks pretty solid. Um, I am going to go down through item B under old business, town warning. I'd like to make a motion to concur. Since at the special meeting, we did not have the final auditor's numbers with the assistant treasurer's uh, uh, agreement. Um, and it happened the following, happened, I think it was on uh, the 26th, according to the auditor's report that they sent in their report on here. The auditors signed off. Oh, come on. Hold on. I'm sorry. Two, three, four. There was a consolidated balance sheet produced approximately the 25th. Oh. The wording that said, did I not print it out? If not. Well, the auditors made their re final report on the 26th of January. Um, is it not in the is it not in the back book? It is. It is. Oh, okay. Sorry. Excuse me. It's right here on uh, page four. <clears throat> the auditor's book was dated January 25th, 2023. So at this point, I'd like to make a motion to concur with the amounts that are listed in Article Six General Fund, and I will read it. Into the minutes, shall the voters authorize general fund expenditures for operating expenses of $179,262, of which 
$438 shall be raised by taxes and $45,824 by non-tax revenues. May I have a second? Second. Seconded by Stan, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of concurring with the amounts listed in Article 6 as just read, signify by saying aye. 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 My motion passes. I would like to make a motion that we concur with the amounts listed in Article 7, Highway Fund, and I shall, uh, may I have a, a second? Second. Seconded by Stan Noga. I shall read the article, Article 7. Shall the voters authorize highway fund expenditures of $409,520, of which $355,722 shall be raised by taxes and $53,798 by non-tax revenues for the highway fund? So I have made a motion. It's been seconded. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor of concurring with the amounts listed in the Article 7 signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. It was, it were the numbers in those two articles that also were solidified in the night before the report was due. Was done. Because when we found the $4,800 misplacement, it and, changed then the, the numbers. and then the, the articles, it changed the numbers. So... She, Melissa asked me to go in and make the adjustment and then let her know what the numbers were. So wow. that's what I did. Fabulous. Okay. Mm -hmm. We have one last thing to do, um, <clears throat> which was not voted at the special meeting. I'd like to make a motion on a vote to concur with the addition of Article 16, which is the, may I have a second? Second. Seconded by Bruce Mello. Discussion. Article 16 reads as follows, to elect one West River Modified Union Education District School Director who was a resident of Brookline for a three-year term. It came, it came about that, that um, the current person's term is expiring, and so that article needed to be inserted uh, uh -huh. after the fact. So we have a motion, a second, any other discussion? Hearing none, all of those in favor of concurring with the addition of Article 16 as read a moment ago, please signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. Very good. Uh, next item, town report um, should be, I think it's, it's uh, I think it was 20 pages and it has the uh, Brookline meeting house on the cover. And the only thing that I can say is about the town meeting is that um, I guess I need to put out a request for someone to run the pot left. Yeah. I may have said I was going to do that before, but I didn't. I didn't uh, follow up. On that. I don't know. I'm going to put it out for um, whomever I would like to do it. Any other items under old business before I move? Oh, yeah, next we have one more. Anything else about the town report or warning before we move on to the next one? Uh, I would like to suggest that we spend just a moment, not actually in detail going over it, but remember next fall to look at other things that maybe we could include in the town report. Uh, uh, last then. night, before uh, making finalized corrections on uh, suggestions that I had, and I have no idea whether David has implemented those corrections or not. Uh, there, there are some inconsistencies with pretty much in two spots where other towns are doing it consistently a yeah, different yeah. way. So, uh, so um, and, and uh, so they tend to focus on the, the, the meeting the end of the physical year that the meeting is held for as part of the title and for the reference to the minutes within. The other thing I looked at is we haven't last year and we didn't this year put down the taxes changed from, in this case, 2021 and 2022. And I am pretty sure Jamaica does this too from when I was looking up income for the highway person, Mark, but last evening, uh, Halifax, Athens, and Brattleboro 
all three of them show the comparative uh, printout of changes in tax rates for both the real estate school portion and the municipal portion. Uh -huh. And it's, I think it would be a helpful informative tool for the community to have. Okay. All right, very good. I also want to make note that uh, Guy sent along um, a reminder, the municipal report filing reminder. Um, it is as town meeting day approaches, the Vermont State Archives and Records Administration would like to provide a friendly reminder that municipalities are required to submit one copy of their annual municipal report to us per, and it makes the, the, the SA, VSA. A PDF of the report is preferred using the following file name format, town name, underscore 2022, underscore, so on and so forth. Um, so Guy says that last year when David finished, finalized the report um, that he sent it off to them. So I should contact David and ask him to do the same this time. I think that's a wonderful idea. If David doesn't want to do that, and I don't know if he intends on continuing into the future or not, but uh -huh. if, he, if he if he doesn't want to do it either this time or next time, if he sends a full PDF of corrected to me, so I'm simple. Can send it. There yeah. you go. I'm yeah. just looking at saying that I would volunteer to do that if not. Okay. But if somebody else wishes to, that's fine with me too. <laughs> so yeah, so it's just a reminder to to I'm gonna put David on here. All right. All right, last item, um, ARPA review of the current funds and discussion. I know, Bruce, you asked for a little bit of time to uh, at this meeting to talk about that today. The only sentence I have is I would like to consider, oh, next time I would like to make a little, uh, what I consider a draft outline of the things we should consider to spend the ARPA money on. I've already come up with some additional ideas since I talked to you about how not to spend the money, which I really like. But the hallmark of my presentation is to consider putting a minimum of $50,000 in a dedicated fund for the church. And we can talk about it. Um, but the rest, I figured that you guys have been working your butts off getting all this together. So we're all going to do a break for a minute, and then we, maybe we can start discussing the other fund at, at, at the next meeting. We have two more meetings left before, before town meeting. <laughs> So um, I think one of the things that I wanted to make clear is that the ARPA funds don't all have to be spent for the town meeting. However, knowing that our the town meeting, the town meeting I'm not finish. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but being that oh, this current the meeting. Meeting before the town oh, meeting, but it. this current board. You, you, and I, uh, we've spent money on uh, two major items already. And if you're wanting to put fifty thousand dollars of ARPA funds for the Brookline Meeting House on the agenda for a vote next week, next yeah. month, okay. But just going forward before this, before your term ends and my term ends, mm -hmm. um, I can see that that might be something of, of interest. How do you feel about that? I believe we should be discussing funds. I can tell you now that I will not vote for that particular uh, set aside. There's so many other things that we need as a town well, in, in addition to that. And I think list, that I've listed everything that I uh -huh. that I thought that we've yeah. talked about, and I've looked at the numbers of everything. So I guess what we need to do is before that comes up to vote, we talk about all that first, and then we can decide well, maybe 50000 is too much. Maybe it should only be 20000 Or maybe it could be 70000 But it, I, I it's think a guideline. That's a good question that we need to ask as the last article to the town meeting. It's non-binding by the citizens is what's their take on where they want some of this money to go. And uh, since it's non-binding, I and we're probably not going to make a decision before town meeting, I can't imagine. Non-binding. Well, I, I suppose you will shut that. To, to do before the end of the select board's term would be, you know, we put in twenty nine thousand to the school and twenty seven thousand to retention, and I would think that putting in at least that amount to the 
to that to that building would be appropriate. It is the one building that is a community centered mm -hmm. building, and we and so I, I would like to see it grow as a. Um, but Stan has an appropriate point. But uh, where, where I'm going is, I think that consideration should be done after that discussion about all the other things. And I go, what I'm going to do is put a draft together of everything I see that we can spend money on. I just made a comment a little while ago that I found one area that I appear, I think that I have a way to fund something in that list rather than using other money. I want, I want to be, I want to spend that money. Easily. Yeah, it, it sounds like there's a good hour discussion that would be dedicated or necessary, at least if not one meeting over a couple at some point when it's appropriate to determine uh, what and if. I mean, I've looked at other towns as to what they use their money for. Mm -hmm. They would like to see what new thing did. They've got a nice presentation of what amounts they mm -hmm. utilized. And they've got more town buildings. In and I'm open to ideas. So, I'm you know, it's, it's, the one idea. we have a tenant, the other one we don't. The other one we use part time uh, in terms of the meeting house, uh -huh. you know, and there's a, uh, and we saw how much the school took to refurbish and bring back into a, a an cool. so, you know, I'm looking at, we don't know if there's a priority list that's available, which items are worth pursuing first, what is the cost of them, and how whatever we contribute in terms of a set aside money for. The meeting house, if we do that, take that route, uh, would make a dent in that list to give us a realistic perspective of right now with tight crunch because of the flood and the monies that are due, not knowing when we're going to get money, not wanting to borrow if we can help it. Uh, and, and there, you know, we had talked, it would seem to me seriously about looking at the potential of purchasing equipment mm -hmm. that we're out of all, basically $104,000 left, taking half of that out of the picture and not addressing any of the other issues and the ARPA concerns right. that are out there, just doesn't, at this instant, maybe after talking about it, it will, but right now, right. I, I'm in no position to say, I want this money in that. I just think we ought to look at the big picture. I agree. See where we would benefit the town the most mm -hmm. in any situation, and then with money and, and, and higher power approval, I heard go, go go in the direction that's best for the citizens of the town. Okay. And I look at what we have dumped into, and I don't mean that negatively, but has was required to put the school together. You know, I haven't added the latest expenses, but you know, again, 210 over seven years is a big chunk of change that could have been used to lighten things other other places That's true. and that the temperance of that approach and i was part of it i realize now i shouldn't have done that and so shouldn't i i shouldn't have been so agreeing to certain things happening but there was a series there was a, a, a everything uh, could be a, deemed an emergency you know depending on attitude you know, there's so, a heating system we put in another heating System. I don't do that yeah, at my we didn't house. Put it, we so, it. And I'm not really looking to expand this conversation anymore. Okay. Than, and we've already talked about this at least three or four times. Well, I just want to make the same one last system. comment. That building had to be fixed, one. And two, it was done yeah. as a result of neglect. Mm -hmm. That's the end of that discussion. Mm -hmm. So going forth, there's a lot of agree with what you just had to say. I think before we vote on that $50,000, we should do exactly what you said. But every, that's what I'm going to try and do on the draft that I'm talking about. And we can add or subtract from that draft. And those specific items on there, I have ways to finance all that. I'm trying to keep away from spending the money because I'm cheap. I want to, if I have my way, I put $103,000 into the church, but no one's going to go for that. But that's not, that's not the point. The point is, wherever we can, we need to put all our needs on the table, like Stan said, and figure out what of those needs ARPA money should come out of restful fall in place. I also want to make note that we have our uh, the uh, Deerfield Valley uh, yeah, Fiber TV, um, and and if we do make a pledge to them before May, before May is finished, there is a doubling of the amount. So if we if we pledge five thousand, they will get ten thousand for Brookline. Um, can but I, that's only before May. So okay. that was just something but that. How many 
wasn't it like 20 or 23 homes that were underserved? In I state? think it was like more like nine. And we're spending how much? And so they said it was approximately $3,000 a home. Our, our commitment was originally deemed by them to be approximately 12, but they looked right. at something else that was built into that number that didn't need to be built in. So the final number that they asked us to consider was $10,000. Right, and if for, we donated nine from ARPA, it, they would get 10. Oh, because five, get 10, so we would only come up with five? Right. That's a deal. Right, this is- For, like, for nine homes? And that would completely for, make- For whatever phase three will assist Brooklyn and whatever it might that cost at some point. Everybody will be served this community? That, that's, that's- Seems affording. That's what I- uh, Seems affordable. Right, but again, it is, um, the Stephen Johns reminded me and I brought, and it's been shared before, but um, the Vermont Community Broadband expands town match, uh, expands town match grant for towns to bring broadband to all Vermonters. And so they will, um, again, they will double whatever we, we, we donate uh, of ARPA funding. So this, okay. but there's a time, time on to get it up to speed in this town, we need 10 or 15,000 total expenditures. 10. Yeah, and they're going to cope with five if we do it by man. They will double whatever we give them. And if we need 10 total and we put five, they'll double. It. Right. It's a no-brainer. So, again, that would be something that I'd like mm -hmm. to remind. And we do have a, a committee person uh, uh -huh. that is working with BB uh, Fiber here in town, Don Domain. Okay. Stephen John. Oh, all right. Anything else under old business? All right. Uh, reports and updates. Mark Bills, what's new in town? <clears throat> Nothing real new, just general maintenance. A uh, little bit of storm damage in the past couple of weeks. Our winter finally is coming back to us. Like, <laughs> It took a day to uh, reinstall the the wing pile on the grader. Oh. We're, you know, feeling like we're going to be getting some major storms that will have a call for the grader to go out and push snow banks back. Um, we have the generator working nice now. Uh, that, that's a good asset to the town. There was a, uh, uh, we talked about this before we started the meeting, but uh, I have to contact Larson Electric and confirm what is on the generator lines. Yeah, because uh, down on this split panel that you switch breakers to convert yeah. so for generator usage, they are all listed there. He's got each breaker separated per item that okay. uh, the generator so but what's not listed it's not on the line is the is the well yeah a, a couple concerns was the furnace is a boiler i guess and i'm not sure how it demands water if it if there's no water coming from the well does it need water to supply the boiler or oh. I, I don't know how that works so what's this Go ahead, Stan. How many watts is the generator for continuous running? I'm not oh, that's sure. A fairly that that. But this isn't a big building either, Stan. I'm not sure that number would help. Yeah, I, I I have an arrangement like I assume that's down on the panel there. Okay. And the only things I don't have on it are the hot water heater and my heat pumps. Everything else, the water, uh, the... Uh, uh, the the pump, the septic pump, all of that. When I look at the the breakers that they're on, they're topped out at twenty amps. Okay. So, uh, and it's very rare when my water pump and my septic pump are both on at the same time. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah. I I would suspect that having the water on and the furnace is not going to overtax the unit at all or do anything okay. adversely. But you'd want to oh, check with Mr. Yeah. Larson for sure. Yeah, more Mr. Larson. Furnace, it's only 15 amps. Yeah. Water, water, 
Uh, you said water? <clears throat> uh, water is double pole. Uh, it is, uh, is 20 amp. It's double breaker. Uh, yeah. It's my, at least my one was yeah. double is. So yeah. that you're going to use some juice. But with, with but with a furnace, on, I don't know. I know that's a oil furnace. That's my, my, my furnace is on a 20 amp uh, yeah. forced hot water at my house. I don't know I why they did that. Uh, yeah. But I would expect most likely a 20 amp, but it could be 15. In any event, it shouldn't overcast. Sure. So let's find out what, what it would take to get that placed yeah. onto the generator system. Yeah, because if, yeah, if, we had a, if we had, this is not considered a warming center. However, if someone needed to come in, if we had a couple of days and needed to charge their phone or, so or, or getting some okay. water or go to the bathroom or something. Yeah, transfer box. That's what we're going to buy us. He must so, have a special gizmo on the plate, the face of that. It's to the left of yeah, its own little. Did he add anything box. to the original breaker? I think there's wires tied into the alarm system for. Uh -huh. uh, okay, he's got that on it. Yeah, definitely. that's tied to it. Okay. Uh, because Mayan, Mayan is simply the I, lights, the furnace, the alarm, and and. And a and plug in the floor. floor. Those Don't are the six things. Computer, two sets of lights. The furnace. The computer, two sets of light. The, right. the furnace and a plug in the uh, in the. Yeah, that's nothing. Right. Yeah. It's not but very. I, 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 I would caution a thousand cost. if you're going to put computers on that that we buy oh, a, a, a battery, uh, backup battery attachment for each computer, and plug that into the wall, and then plug the battery into the computer. So that there's a constant flow of electricity going through the computer. You can ruin a computer well, if the water sure pump is. comes on on that, and all of a sudden the power dips and it overheats something inside uh -huh. the unit. You might fry something. So uh -huh. that might eliminate that from happening. It's an additional expense of whatever, but as a precaution. And again, ask Mr. Larson about that. But I also have to ask Scott because he's aware of, of, of the backup system that we have for the computers, and maybe we already have those batteries. I'm not sure. Again, yeah, all you're talking about is pretty low voltage stuff. Yeah, yeah so talking. it's something that we yeah. need to follow yeah. up on yeah. in addition to Because uh, well, I have a hot water baseboard system like this. Oil. Uh huh. 15 amp. Hmm. All right. What else? Anything else? Uh -huh. um, no, basically, uh, good storm cleanup. We've had some heavy wet snow that's taken out the power and we <laughs> cleaned yeah. it out. So I've uh, done a lot of that. Um, and that's about it. General maintenance. I have an ongoing list with Bruce for maintenance between the, the design <coughs> buildings. So we're working. We're uh, one for that. Okay. That covers everything. All right. Very good. Thank you. Um, Mr. Noga? Uh, the only thing I could offer is everything that any is this the matter which arose today in the emails, which was that uh, Megan Brunk from AOT District 2 uh, has sent around the paperwork that she's going to need to go over with the highway department and the town. Uh, there's a form that we need to certify that the roads are in compliance with state standards as we did last year uh, and the T60 form and some of the other numbers that she's going to want. Uh, but we've got at this point plenty of time to deal with it, uh, probably in a calmer time either the end of February or um, April might be a time to deal with those things. And that's the only thing. I know there's one issue that there's one thing where they want to know if we want another uh, municipal grant uh, for a highway road work project like we've had the last two years. I think it's a, maybe a grant made, I'm not sure. Uh, but uh, they they want to know that if we want to apply, that may be a little earlier than April, so that we can get on the list of interested parties. And when the state then gets to it in the spring, they will list out every town that they're giving a grant to. Uh, we've been on the list, fortunately, for the last two years. Okay. Um, so this paperwork would this require a pre-select board meeting? brain session just to go through it so that we know what to do or just would this be a fully organized online uh, in a meeting or would it be like it was a, it's, it's a board's prerogative i think i think in the past 
it, I get the sense from my experience the past year, there aren't too many people that was aware of it, which says to me that it hadn't been probably processed the whole way through everybody's knowledge and presented at a board meeting. Uh, but I frankly, personally, I don't know, Mark would probably want to shed his feelings on it, but I think it should be something that everyone is aware of. So if anything should happen to the people that are responsible for it, there is a backup mechanism in place. There, There is a, some form that needs to be signed by all the select board members yes. as we work through it. And they do have a list of, you know, who's the form and who's the emergency, who's the select board chair and so on and so forth as well as the application. So what, when should I, what would you suggest I put, what month do you think I should put this into our agenda? Well, I would suggest since I haven't looked at the dates again, is that we set dates for our next meeting and I will have those dates available for you. We'll have looked through all the paperwork, organized it by date of uh, either filing or application dates and, uh, and, and then answer that question at that time and the select board as a whole can put it in anywhere between those target end dates and, and now or next meeting. Okay, so- Does that next, sound reasonable? No? So you're saying yeah. on the 15th, yeah, I'll have it on the agenda again to yeah. just plan a little, just plan future dates. Yeah, for, yeah, for to discuss the dates, the, the issues, that. the topic to be so discussed. Okay. Each of those dates with the paperwork file. All right. There as, as far as what Megan's email, I think what I get out of it, what she's going to contact us to set and go over a lot of that highway. I think she came last time in June, didn't she? Yeah, or it was the after, very end of May. After town meeting, they start scheduling yeah. towns to meet and form well, because of that one structured grant, I guess we do apply for it each year and we're not uh, awarded it only like every five to seven years. Which is for like a big culvert, like a box a culvert. Box culvert. And, and we we do have a list of waiting projects. So we're just waiting for the fundings to come from the state for that. And also, I should have brought it up before when it's my turn, but I did receive a phone call from Jeff Nugent, and we were talking about the driveway culvert um, phraseology that we put together, the standards that we adopted for size and uh, his question was, what does our town do about the second driveway culvert? Is it the town's responsibility or the landowner? He, he's uh, putting together kind of a mapping system and thought that we may, like right now, our culvert inventory map doesn't include driveway culverts. It's more or less just under road culverts and bridges and mm -hmm. structures and so he thought that where we're involved with maintaining them after they're installed that we may want to have on our map include driveway culvert inventories and keep track of the size and the conditions and you know what shape they're in uh all of that stuff so that's something he is also going to be he said on the phone that he would be contacting us uh, to come in and talk about grants that we do through with them and help us determine which culverts are in need. So he, he said he would help us determine well, which grant we should apply for on our oh, next, good. next round. We can do it that way. So, I mean, these are the small ones like uh, yeah, the MIGP there and yeah. the Better Back Road. Yeah. So, I know we have a, a list of conditions, what shape culverts are in, but it sounds like they're coming to see us. And, and again, I had brought this up when I met with Lisa Donnelly from Wyndham Regional, and she said the same thing, that they would be in contact with us to help us make those. Did they mention our participation for fee in any program um, that does this thing? We didn't really talk fees okay. or, or it, it just sounds like it'll be all informational. Okay. As they... It sounds to me, based on the way I've experienced it for the past uh, 9, 10, 12 months, is that 
they seem to be only interested in working on a fee basis because that's the only way they keep themselves alive financially. Okay. All right. And if they don't have enough business with what with us and like being a small town, we didn't have too much expense on this. And we put off, we we're gonna put off initially till next year, uh, this year to start looking at costs and so forth and reflect on whether we're gonna continue and in what way with the with the sand and salt shed. Yeah. The minute I put things off, I'd email people there and I would not get an answer, which says to me, they're not directing attention yeah. because they're not making enough money. Yeah. It needs yeah. To, their their space and time is limited and, and they've got to do what they need to do to survive financially. So yeah. I'm wondering if this is a marketing prospect because, uh, because about a month ago, I mentioned that in my finalizing the paperwork and the understanding the fee structure, the MRGP and so forth, and attended online a seminar about how it works, virtually everything can be done by the town without any guidance expected yeah. or required. Yeah. So the question becomes, great, if they can take work off our shoulders and we don't have to pay them for it. That's different. That's, that's one thing. Yeah. But if they're if they're looking to create business, right. uh, that's, that's another thing. Been, been and I need to that. add something else. We just backed out of well, sand the, the, the Sand and Salt Shed Grant. Mm -hmm. In a seminar that I attended uh, the end of last week, it became apparent to me, oh, it was the LCT. Mm -hmm. They were talking about the fact that the state of Vermont has $76 million that they have not handed out in grants to the municipalities of the state. <laughs> they can't, there are not enough towns that are interested. Huh. And, and I'm thinking, well, they're small like us and they're trying to do some structure that's halfway decent. They're, the match is excluding them. As a matter of fact, I, as a chat, asked that question, is it because do you think it might be because of the match amounts that you're asking small towns to contribute to their expense of building something? If there's $76 million left, it would seem to me they could say, oh, you've got less than 1,000 people. You don't have a match. We'll pay right. for it. Right. Okay. Yeah. Well, in the final upshot of that presentation, uh, Gwen Zakoff, I believe is her name, at VLCT said, well, you know, there's another thing that might be in play here. The, the states have their own match that they have to pay the federal government for being in the program to begin with. And that $76 that's showing up as a plus unspent may be their match. Wow. So huh. to be pursued, huh. to be pursued. Interesting. Um, yeah. Yeah. I, I do have one question. Are, did our contract with Wyndham Regional expire and we were waiting at one point i recall refresh my memory stan that the something expired the management contract with wyndham regional for whatever reason i could not get margo to renew and i think when i copied her i also copied mr canthy but irrespective of that we have a contract that we signed I think you might have been the person that signed the most recent extension that brought it up to the 295.6 or 296.5, uh, which has not expired. And that's not going to expire until okay. I believe it is 2026. Okay. So the the thing that's going to cost us, uh, I think it was uh, $13,700 we figured out you and I one day when we were here is the extent of their fees but they wouldn't divulge when I said, we, we got to renew this and what are our fees going to be? That's an answer no, I don't have. Yeah. So okay. I, I can't answer the question other than that. Yes, you're absolutely correct. And a good observation that expired. I thought that was astute what you were talking about with Win Winter Regional. And I haven't delved deeply into all of Margaret Gia's or Winter Regional's emails, <laughs> but I got that impression being in sales on my life. They're looking at me. I thought they were an organization supposed to help communities. I'm not saying they don't. And they're supposed to be working for communities, not as a profit-bearing entity. And that was the feeling I was getting. That's the first thing. The second point I'm thinking is, 
which I've been thinking for quite some time. And I've kind of said, I've said, it, no, I've said it to Dot. Unfortunately, we lost Pat Lay. But those two senators got a phenomenal amount of money for the state. And it's dripping all over the state. And if we're smart, and you'll see next week when I talk about the book, I want to keep as much of that art money right over here as we can. And we'll look at the stuff that we want to do and see how we can do that without spending all that ARPA money. And part of that is exactly what I was just talking about a minute ago, the grants, the free money that's out there, um, the um, um, efficiency Vermont. Uh, there's a lot of stuff out there that if we, if we use our heads and focus on the things that we want to get done, we could have a lot of help. And I don't know if it's ever going to come again, especially in light of what the, what's going on with Congress now for the next few years. This is dead. As you know, there's no Congress in the next few years. So but anyway, there's there's a lot of money in this state, thanks to those two senators. And I think that we should look long and hard. I'd like to call my friend, my efficiency of Vermont again, and see how things have changed and what else he's got to offer me. And same with Green Mountain Power. Power. When we got that $9,000 from, from Green Mountain Power for the heat pumps, I was like, whoop. Tim, Tim Hart told me about that. I wouldn't have known about it. You know, this is kind of stuff that's all out there in the weeds. Needs a little bit of research, but the profit is just off the charts. Well, hopefully on Monday when we learn at the other we workshop, go. we might be able to, to work with that. Yes, sir. The, the email that we got from um, uh, our legislator, uh, Leslie Goldman, I'm very happy that she took the time and effort to Do that. let us know right. that it's out there. Before coming to the meeting tonight, uh, looking, uh, since I realized I wasn't going to have the minutes done, I, I logged on and briefly Googled that. And it appears to be uh, a program that uh, pays for people in the health industry uh, to further their degree or further the access to people that have the healthcare expertise. Uh -huh. So it, it's something that off the top of my head, I'm not sure we're going to have a need for unless it funds some residents uh, schooling. Uh -huh. In that case, if it brings a benefit to a citizen in that regard and it requires them to serve in the county so that overall there's a benefit oh, gotten back, I, I think I'd be very much interested in that. Oh, for sure. My last comment is how does the board feel about asking Jeff Nugent? Is this a cost program? Is it a, is there a management contract we need to implore for that? Uh, or is this a, a gratis process? I would think Jeff would be able to give you some clear uh, answers on where- But he, he emailed yeah, you like, asking for it. So do you want to serve as the spearhead for answering and dealing with that? Yeah, okay. I, I think for years, uh, they just worked with each town and they did a lot of information, but as it's evolving, now they're asking for money to help with all this grant yeah. business. And um, and grants are great. They save the town lots of money over time. But, you know, when your budget's only so big, how many grants can we take on and mm -hmm. afford? That's I mean, right. we have to be picky, choosy, yeah. and afford what we can. It's not like, oh, that sounds like a good grant. Let's go for it. But like the South Sanchez, it just didn't fit our budget. And... It was a great idea to begin with, but it outgrew us fast. Mm -hmm. um, but it seems like they're pushing grant, 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 but we have to match, match, match. Just mm -hmm. use them as priorities to mm -hmm. uh, help us and not just take them because they're a grant. Mm -hmm. uh, not, thank you for being patient and allowing us to happen. <laughs> no, that's fine. Because one of the things that I have under highway grants is this BRIC grant, the Building Resilient Infrastructure and Communities Grant. I did want to say that uh, everything came back from the state once the stuff was zero, uh, scanned and sent over. I put together a binder uh, with the confirmations and all the paperwork in it, all signed, sealed, and delivered. Um, and it contains the timesheets and such for us to use. Um, and of course, one of the things that we need to do is, since this grant sat without being authorized for a year, because I you know, didn't realize it was something that was uh, submitted before I came back on board, they did send us a template for the RFP 
to, to send out to get this done. This grant is to rewrite uh, hazard mitigation plan for the town um, so that it meets FEMA regulations. And of course, when I was first trying to do some research and I would call Alyssa, she said to me, I can't help you with any of this initial information. We want to be a bidder on the RFP for the project and help to control it with you, you know. And so we do have the RFP and um, it is something that I think that we should also put on the agenda for the next meeting because we got to move on that. There's a lot of road stuff that has to be planned. We have to that we have to sit down and finalize the RFPs for the Putney Mountain storm damage, yeah. number yeah. one. Yeah. Right, we have to get yeah. together because we have all that list, what's 90%, what's 80% done. Yeah. That has to get done this year. And then we have to take a look at if there are other small projects and things within town, like we have to talk about the Harris Hill damage, that, that we have to, plan for, for these things. Yep. So, um, and then plan for this other program, which involves a $2,600 match on our, our part. So, so um, have we, have we thought about these numbers going into the budget? Yes. This, this, this match should, should, should be included. In, yes. And this is, um, again, so it has to be done. I mean, it's by law. Otherwise, we won't have any FEMA out if we had any other storm, too. So, um, program operating expenses and so on and so forth. So, there is work to be done on that. And so, I will put it on the agenda for us to. I will sit, provide everyone a copy of the RFP that's suggested. And uh, I was told that we can send the RFP, which is quite lengthy, and get it published for free um, through their. Their, I don't know what you call it, their news cycle, and it would meet the FEMA guidelines for for publishing the the grant. So we do have the RFP in here. Yes, sir. Not really off topic, but a little interesting. Uh, first off, have we invited our legislators to the town? You know, Stan had mentioned this earlier, and I thought we were running tight. But have they reached out to ask to come? If they ask to come, I'm never going to stop somebody at the door. Uh, this could be a long meeting because we haven't had a meeting in a couple of years. I don't know if she's here. Yeah, and we've got some increase in numbers. Uh -huh, that we're probably going to be uh, explaining. Yeah. Uh, and I I would hope that we'd be done by 9, 9.30. Uh, oh God, I would think so. so right now. I, I'm not sure that this year is the time to do it. I I can tell you that uh, at the same seminar, I found out about the federal grants and the state's relationship. Uh, both the presenters indicated that it would be a good idea to have the towns ask their representatives to attend either the town meeting or select board meeting to get some input from them on their opinion about certain things that are going on in terms of any legislation that we as a town or individually might have as individuals representative of our town uh, want to see happen, uh, that we invite them to the select boards to have a select board meeting. So those two suggestions were made. It did not, they did not speak in behalf of the legislators and say, they will come to your right, time. Right. It was done the other way, and I'm assuming there is a reason for that. Uh, so because we don't have a school board meeting anymore. Good question. Okay, school board meeting, and it's going to be really interesting to see how contentious this budget is going to be. But I don't want to get into that. I have a question for you, John. You can help me with, with my memory on this. Back in March, it was. To, I'm sure you knew about this. We talked about it. I'm sure there was a certain amount of money allocated to the state from the infrastructure bill of the previous fall. I was 2.1 million or 2.1 billion. Do you remember that? I think it was 2.1 billion and I flipped. And a bunch of it was earmarked towards fixing heating systems, et cetera, municipalities, especially, especially school districts. And I called out uh, the efficiency of Vermont, a guy that I didn't have that, Number of conversations with these women also helped me with the heat pump issue and everything. And he didn't know anything about it. 
Uh, and I, I have it here now, the new one. I was going to bring it up under my report. It, go ahead. It's called uh, the Act 172 Municipal Energy Resilience Grant Program, which will be launch, launching soon. The De Mont Department of Buildings and General Services, which is administrating this program, has partnered with the state's 11 regional planning commissions to work with the municipalities in our regions. As this program unfolds and more details become available, the Wyndham Regional Commission will be your primary contact for questions to technical assistance and grant assistance. Wyndham Regional Commission has two primary staff members who will be working on this program, Margo Gia and Mike McConnell. We recognize that this program covers a broader array of municipalities than we typically work with. So if you have any questions about who we are and what we do, please don't hesitate to ask. So it's a municipal energy program that's going to be launched. And again, uh, the state the this came from uh, Wyndham Regional Commission on January 23rd, 2023. Okay. <clears throat> it says here, we ask that your governing but, body select a primary point of contact. And but yeah. it, I don't believe it still pertained to what I was pointing at, pointing at. And that's a 2.1, because well, it was in March. For what purpose? It was infrastructure money for the state of Vermont. Okay. And part of it, a chunk of it, was energy improvement for, for schools. And of course, at that time, I was thinking about, you know, heating systems and the pumps and all that. Uh, and I tried like hell to get an answer but I couldn't get one. Well, this, this, this since it's heat and energy resiliency, municipal, may maybe. be the same program. Maybe. And there was another email that was sent out today regarding that very program. And this is the same thing, Act 172, and you told Mike McConnell, that Wyndham Regional, that you and I are the contacts for this. But now we got to pay Wyndham Regional and get information on it? I don't know. I don't know. I know, but I, I know where you were astutely I, uh, implying, which I'm like on your tail. It, to it may be a federal grant where their fees are paid, management fees are paid by uh -huh. the feds, and we don't have to pay anything. Uh -huh. it, it's we worth pursuing an answer. Okay. Yeah, we don't know. Okay. Right. So that's this is uh, Act 172. So Act 172. I'll look, want to think oh, about no, it. I'll look it up and try and read the Well, yeah, at least you, you want me to forward you the sure, that's gone through? If you have a link, I think you, you were on the. We forwarded it to him in Did case we? he was okay. Because sometimes we're still the trash without but looking. I have, but I, I skimmed through a lot of stuff <laughs> because of my personal life, I guess. So, little... All right. so that's Wyndham Regional, and that's uh, 172. Sorry, yeah. Oh, anything else, yeah, Stan? Uh, yeah, uh, I attended the quarterly commissioners meeting at Wyndham Regional Commission, and uh, they um, uh, went into depth regarding restructuring their transportation uh, committees. There was a, a committee that was purely transportation. It had the four largest towns in the county, except Brattleboro. I don't know if it even had Wilmington, though. Uh, it was like Halifax, Marlboro, and two other towns that maybe they weren't the largest, but it was only those four people that were giving input to the entire Wyndham Regional Commission. And they realized that that's too small a number. It's not representative of all the towns. So what they're requesting is that each town provide them with two representatives, they realize that may be an uh, un, unfair expectation, uh, and they're willing to settle with whatever comes their way. And the the nature uh, of it, the the committee is it's now going to be recast as a Wyndham Transportation Advisory Committee, and they're going to solicit input from er every town in the county as to what the developments and focus should be for transportation. Halifax had Route 112 and uh -huh. not any other major road. There, one easy way to Brattleboro was along a river, which tended to flood uh, and for years was gravel. They've since paved it. So they have limited needs. And uh, to me, it was a good thing in that any other town that has issues with connectivity to major uh -huh. highways, uh, maybe getting Athens Road paved or or something like that, or Ellen Ware Road finished or paved or or whatever that makes our life better in the community is something that could be pursued. 
uh, it's up in the select board mandate or, or suggest where they want to go with it as the time passes and the need arises uh, so that um, they're, they're making that shift. They want to get more, more, serve more communities, get more input from more communities. And it would be essentially uh, a larger board or committee that would discuss the issues that arise to the surface and then discuss it at, to the whole Wyndham Regional Commission so that the appropriate planning, mm -hmm. transportation planning, bus routes, rail travel, et cetera, can fit in uh, to the most advantageous way to the community, so to the county. So that is that was basically the major change. Uh, they've predicated it on a plan that Rutland County's planning committee uses mm -hmm. and Windsor County's planning. So there's there's a, a, a positive result in the two communities that have employed this kind of switch and change. And they're looking forward to seeing how it develops here. So uh, you probably get a letter, the town will probably receive a letter notifying them that uh, this change is made, probably requesting another representative. And um, money, no. And, <laughs> uh, no, that, that wasn't brought up, you know, it wasn't brought up at all. It's, uh, it seems like there's a dedicated nucleus of those four towns, their four reps have been working together to get something done, but they're realizing that their the influence at, in the sense of sure, the whole board sure. is, is isolated. And, and the way to, if you're truly interested in transportation is what does your plan do to Whitingham if you're next door and you want to do this or, you know, whatever. So they, there's an impact on your neighbors and, and your neighbors need to be aware of it and put input to it too. So it, it seems like a much more thorough process to do it that way and, mm -hmm. and uh, could, could result in something good. I'm not, I don't, I hold my opinion in reservation uh, until we see what it does and how it works. Mm -hmm. But that's the only other thing I have to offer. Okay, all right, very good. Um, building commissioner, Mr. Nello. Okay, basically I have nothing. The only thing I'm going to say at this point, next next meeting, you're going to see what I think should be done to the building. And uh, here on out, done to the building here on out over the period of time and how we're not going to spend our money on it. This building? What building? Susie's. Oh, the daycare. Susie's. So as far as I'm concerned, we're up to date. So Mark's going to do some things. It's like the room upstairs. But basically, um, we're February 1st. I've had zero complaints the whole winter. Good. No, Glad to hear. That's that's amazing. Yeah, it, yeah, it is amazing. So just to drive that home, the heat pipes work. I've got, they like them. Uh, you know, Mark will say Mark's been in the building as much as me, if not more. Day difference, comfortable in the basement. Oh, yeah? Any oh. room. It's nothing like before. No, it's yeah. always cool and damp. Right. No yes, more humidity and, problems. And like, the minute you walk in, it feels like you're at home. I mean, it's you'll see a town like, meeting. Good. You'll yeah. see a town meeting. Yeah. The humidity issue is Go it, on. It's every room. Every room is the same. Wow. It's, uh, it's really nice. Now, I've asked. There shouldn't them, be any more mold issues in the. I've asked them in several, several, several times for numbers on their electricity. I don't seem to be all too awful concerned. Yeah. And I that's not my problem. Yeah, I wouldn't crush them. The only thing I'm concerned about is somewhere down the road, I assume, and Mark and I dabbed around this last time we got together, is to see how those heat pumps work I'm talking in terms of timing, like a thermostat, et cetera. They, it appears, haven't spent the time to even look at, read, read that book. And it's very easily to explain. I mean, setting up the thermostat so you the, the heat comes goes down a little bit overnight comes back on at four o'clock in the morning a couple hours before they get in there they is that something you can have a workshop with them on or are you oh uh, yes but i have to have the time but what i want to do is mark and i understand it first yeah we that's got important. it together then we can do that but it's a little taxing right now for me to get into that uh, it's a, it's a I, lot of effort because each uh, room has its own heat pump, own remote for each heat pump, right? As well as the thermostat to the field boiler to the boiler. So there, there's a regulated number that they both have to jump up to, to Okay, to right, but if they up. did it right, if they cared enough about their electric consumption, which you don't seem to be squawking about, which had to have gone up markedly. Oh yeah, 
yeah. Or you have it. You have it. I yeah. don't have it in yeah. my house. Yeah. And they haven't shown any interest in learning how to set those timers up in order to make it the most efficient possible for their needs. Good. So they're they're not turning them down by no, 10 degrees seven. when they leave the building, no, which would save so. them electricity. It appears to me as though they're keeping it at just the same old temperature. I went in there, in there on a Saturday, 70 degrees in the basement. Sorry, that ain't um, my building. I wouldn't be doing that. Um, I'd have it at 60, but they're having yeah. it at 70, and the heat pumps are on, and they're blowing electricity. Not my problem. Mm -hmm. They've got... They've got four books, four manuals in that building. If they can't take the time to read them, not my problem. But that might be something in the future. We, well, we'll like I said, I went to second step. I went a step further with all that because right, I got pissy go about through, it. Yeah. And I said, well, look, it is our building. It is our heat pumps. We should at least understand how they work, if, even if they don't. I don't have the time right now to sit down. I've been start. I was... <clears throat> I was reading the damn manual in a doctor's office. Mm. <laughs> so that's where I'm at. I'll just leave it at that. Mm. So I don't really have the time to concentrate on all that detail crap at this point to save them money when eventually Mark and I will work it out. We'll figure out how it works and we'll know exactly how it goes down. I understand that one of the reasons why we needed the hot water furnace was That's because different. of the heat exchange you're up in the attic, which is what you're That's in the furnace. Correct? I don't understand what you mean. I'll look there, there, the, you mean the boiler? The, the boiler yes. is not steam, correct? It's hot water? That's correct. Okay. And and there's a line that goes up to the air exchanger upstairs. Correct. Is, is there any correlation between the temperature that the water in that... Um, uh, air exchanger needs to be, and the temperature that the air the heat pumps are run at. No, there's uh, no the correlation at all. No, it's an entirely different system. It's run by the boilers, and the only only we Hiram and I and you Mark a little bit went over this a, a lot, and he fixed them. And basically, their whole function is to keep air moving in that place in Susie's for the time that they are there. So we. Talked about it. We decided to put them on at ten o'clock in the morning. We shut right. them off at time to keep them at, to keep that that air temperature coming out of those boilers is, is temped at seventy degrees. Okay. And every once in a while, I'm down there. I readjust the damn timer because nine times out of ten, it's on the wrong day and all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah after, power outage or something. Well, well, the button, well like I'm you're... not so sure, Doc. Yeah. I am not so sure. I've been down there. And there hadn't any been power outages, and the damn timer's been off two days. Look, I'm into keeping the place healthy. But the bottom line in answering your question is the gas boiler run those two air exchangers. It has nothing to do with the heat pumps. Okay. Um, they might they might put a certain amount of little bit of heat in the room, but by no stretch of your imagination is, is that is that they're not canceling uh, each other out, they're not no, competing with each other. No, no, totally the integrated. Is, no, the room is, no, no, they they're they're separate separate, they're separate okay. units, but so with the problem, there's no problem. No bottom line, there's no problem. Bottom line, it's uh, unless we get a problem with like the pneumonia hole, which keeps busting my shops. But go ahead, Mark. The other day when I was in there, the pumps were closed. It closed. Yeah. No. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah. I've been in numerous times and they're stuck in the open position. I've never seen a pole in the mm -hmm. furnace room. And the other day when I was there checking on things, they were shut. Tell me Friday morning if they're closed. Mm -hmm. Yeah. At 11 below. Yeah. I don't, but the thing is, we have modems yeah, we have and, and, and that in that boiler room. So if it goes down below a certain temperature in that boiler room, those will be able to come on. And they're electrically governed. I found you modems, like in computer modems? Uh, what are they called? The homos, yeah, they? yeah the, the, they're just they're as you walk in the door in the boiler room, yeah, one's right on that wall, wall and there's one they, in, in the uh, in the boy in the air, there's air not chamber. water going through them, like yeah, it's not going to close off for no one, okay, that with the thermostat, yeah, control. So, so if, if the furnace 
should shut off. I think those may, I think they would still. Uh, oh, you know what? I didn't tell you this, what Mark is doing. I'll, I'll make it real quick. The room that we're making, that we're finishing off upstairs for the air exchanger, we discovered that the one facing the gable, the, the wall facing the gable opening in the north side mm -hmm. of the of the building. Yeah. You can see it. I mean, whatever degrees it is outside, it's in the it's in the attic will be in that room because it's wide open. How did that get wide open? Because it was flimsily put together. So oh, this is what okay. we're doing. Oh, so you're sealing that. So this is the plan we're doing. I'll make it real quick. Mark's gonna frame frame off that gable mm -hmm. in that room, which is not a big six eight feet mm -hmm. with two by tens. We have six, we have um excuse me, nine inch bats right underneath you here in that's never been used in, in this room in the building. We're gonna fill that those cavities of the nine inch and cover it with Luon. Mm -hmm. All the R19, which is similar to when you start a wall, a six inch wall when you're building a home as an R19 mm -hmm. with, with with six with six inch insulation. Is what it, everything else is in that room. Yeah. We thought, well, we're going to put uh, higher sheeting on top of that. No, we're not. That's a waste of money. We're going to put Luan on top of it. Put the Luan on top of it. Seal, 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 seal. Put the um, the R30 against that wall, and the whole room will be sealed. What are you using for the outside the insulated wall to keep wind and so forth from taking and waving the bats and losing some of the insulation. Are you stable. sealing that in? It'll be stable. Uh, bats is a, is, a, is a confusing thing because this is paperback bats. Yeah. So they're going to be stapled to the stapled to the studs. Right. But but that's only the the pink the stuff. It, it, nothing's, you're not going to put chicken wire or anything to keep the bat could. intact. Yeah, but everything's a good idea. Or a screen or whatever. Yeah, that could be done, but we're only talking a section about Tell me if I'm wrong, Mark. Maybe from Tear file Ballywack. I shouldn't. Uh, yeah, it's not that big. Yeah, I've been we up there. We could do something like that. You've been up there. Guy and I sealed the ceiling. So. With the whole, and also the exposed one inch pipes. I'm donating some one inch foam piping that I have that I've never used that's sitting in my basement, which mm -hmm. will never be used. Gonna, and one pipe goes right across the floor. Mm -hmm. We're going to cover that over, cover the one inch pipe. Then the bottom line, and this is, I've been really working on this thought process. Quite, quite a while. We have one electrical connection up there for the light. But I need an electrical, electrical connection for heater, a thermostatically controlled heater. What I was going to do originally is have an air thermostat situation hooked up to a light. Bad idea. The boy blows, you won't know. Two things. If I put in a cheap heater, because it doesn't need much, and Heather, down at, we talked about this at great length at WW, and took a, um, what do you call it? A remote sensor in the room down below, hooked up to the room up top, it'll tell you what temperature it is in, in that room. So every time you go by those bathrooms in that, in that toddler room, you look at the thermostat and the, and the guy next to it's the one's telling you what the temperature is up there. My motive for all that is if we were to use bulbs, or a bulb, and it blows out, we lost our heat. But if we just put a small, cheap heater hooked up to an electrical connection to an air thermostat that keeps it 40 degrees, it's cost effective, and it'll never blow. And the backup is having that sensor down next to the thermostat in the room that I'll tell you what the temperature is up there. So, sounds like you get no freeze on the street. I haven't quite got the electrical. Fine tuned as to how to do the electrical part of it, but I'm getting there. And if that works that way, we'll have a light up there, which we already do, and we'll have the heat. <clears throat> I might even switch and use the electric from the light to govern the heat and have some kind of a remote light. So when we're getting ready to go up there, we flip it up like we got light up there. Because I need we only have one circuit up there for electricity. And it's kind of hard to, to put the two together without shutting off the power down below because there's a well, sounds like you got your plans all well i haven't finalized yet i'll work yeah. on i'll get it right um and, mm -hmm. and if, if mark onion ever shows up in my house i might throw it his way and let him give me some suggestions but that's the final byproduct with it with the idea 
that we will never have to go up there. Mm -hmm. When that's done, we never have to go up there. You just look at that thermostat. Oh, wait a minute. It's saying 35 degrees up there. There's something wrong. We know that that's a, that should be at least 40 degrees, and we know we got a problem. But other than that, you'll never have to touch it ever again. Anything else? Nope. I'm done. All right. Well, thank you very much. That's enough, and I was going to explain that. Um, Guy Tanza, are you he no, disappeared online? All right, there's a lot of All right, so uh, town clerk report. Uh, he's not here. Okay, select board chair report. Uh, I just wanted to let you know that the, the Brattleboro Development Credit Courts in Sebka um, had a Knowledge Bright uh, uh, workshop with Katie Buckley um, and Bonnie Wagoneer. Uh, with the Vermont League of Cities and Towns on Federal Fund Assistance Program. Would you like me to send you the link? It's been recorded. Federal Fund Assistance Program. Federal Fund Assistance Program. Or pertain to what? Uh, how to use federal funds and get help without paying money because it's through that Vermont League of Cities and Towns. Unlike Vermont Regional. The regional <laughs> this might be a way of getting the assistance. Sounds like because yeah, we can't do much. All right, I'm going to share this link to uh, to both of you for if you wanted to watch the video. Sounds good. Thank okay. you. Okay. Um, next item on here, we already talked about uh, the Vermont grant and annual financial plan. We'll discuss that in a little bit more detail on the 15th. You should notice that you got a VLCT newsletter, which has information about uh, town meetings and yes. so on and so forth. I'm you much that. Um, Alyssa Sabato contacted Guy and myself and gave some suggestions as far as updating the town's website. So uh, the local emergency management plan or LEMP, which we do after town meeting, has been pulled off the website because it doesn't have to be up there. And uh, the Brookline Local Hazard Mitigation Plan is up on the website. Uh, and that's what the BRIC grant is going to be updating. All right. Um, Vermont Emergency Managers Association. Um, there are, I, I now have access to a shared drive of information um, in the case of emergencies. And there are some events that are, are occurring, but I'm in the loop because of the 911 coordinator thing that I got. Um, I did want to bring up that a while back, Helen Holt got a, uh, uh, information about reappraisaling, reappraising, mm -hmm. and there was an agreement that was out deep, um, from for the town of town of Brooklyn, Vermont, excuse me, mm -hmm. and ne through Nemeric to um, do the reappraisal. Do you ha did you have this, or would you? Well, like I think I made a copy of it. It's on my computer. Okay, so I'd like to. We put this on the agenda for us to talk about for reappraisal of the town. Yeah, because yeah, they do the grand list. Of course. Right. Hmm. Okay. So that would be um, for February 15th um, for some more little discussion. So if you have a chance, if you want, I can, I'm going to send it out to both these again, just in case you don't have it or it's not handy. And I can... Um, you can be refreshed on that. Okay. Um, so I think the reappraisal, emergency management, website, VLCT. We also talked about the financial plan and knowledge bites and Act 172. We already talked about that. And we talked about mm -hmm. that. So that's where we're at at this time. Um, any other reports or discussions from the select board that you'd like to bring up at this time? If not, we'll move on to communications. Two of the communications we already discussed. One is the email from the ARPA meeting, state agencies. The second one is the meeting with the state police. Uh, third one on here is that Kim Friedman put on front porch forum and wanted to reach out, requested for Brookline to participate in a study on solar use in Brookline. She never called me. I, I called her back that Sunday after that Thursday or Friday. And I says, you know, and then I left her a message. I think she didn't call me back. And then I let send her an email. I never heard from her. All right. She's so anyway, they're, they're working on yeah, looking at an of, uh, the whole area and looking for sites for, for solar oh, development so because there's funding that's available. Yeah, I know all of that. But she, yeah. So, so you, for right now, as she far as that, me, you know, 
text me, I'll say call Bruce. Yeah, she would contact me. But she, okay, she that's, that's I good. left her two messages. So right. She's done that before, and then I didn't hear from her for six months. So we're going to move on. The other pieces of communication, one is from Efficiency Vermont. Mm -hmm. You know, this is interesting here. It says lighting discounts expire beginning July 1st. Now, we I know we what? said lighting I discounts you. expire beginning July 1st. Ooh, which one is that? So Efficiency it's Lighting. Only started, it's only, I'm sorry. Guys, I like the April 1st is when it started last year. They changed it April 1st. They're going to stop it July 1st. Ah, uh, Chris would I'll right. make a copy of this for you if you'd like. It says respond by April 1st, 2023, if you're interested in it. And it has, uh, I think the town, this office could probably use, get rid of some of the fluorescent oh, lightings oh, in, in here. And uh, these aren't LED. No. So they're pretty broke to no longer going to be available. You're not going to be, be able to replace them. So they need to be, to be LED. Right. So I'm going to make, Bruce, I'm make a copy for Okay. For you, and okay. There's fluorescence out there, and fluorescence. What's being in another discussion The second thing of uh, snail mail came from Comcast Northeast Operations Center. Um, it's network improvements and so on and so forth. So it, it, it's just Comcast saying what they're doing. My concern is, and I, we brought it up before when we were trying to set up the L, is that to watch that TV on my home TV, it's no longer channel eight or channel 10. And he said it's channel 10, 1082. Who that goes up that high when they're watching oh, yeah. TV? Yeah, you, if you, if you uh, channel search, it will go up to, I've got mine goes up to 1400. I, I know, but, uh, but in Ooh. general, I mean, well, it used to be and they should have oh, sent you at the time they're changing over a listing of the new channels. What company? I can send you a spec, oh, scan yes. it in, and send it to you. Oh, but but when you get onto it, you you can't you can't play the the <laughs> town the, the the recorded meeting. You have to go on your computer onto the internet, Google Fat TV. <laughs> yeah, no, That's the only way to do it. There's no way to do it. People like my friend Howard Hodgson sitting home. He used to call me up and say, hey, you're on TV right now. <laughs> I'm just saying it doesn't happen anymore. So anyway. Okay. All right. Um, so that's that. So pay orders are, are next. Okay. I'd like to make a motion to approve payroll warrant. 2331, dated February 1st, 2023, in the amount of $1,552.19. May I have a second? Second. Second, no. I think Stan got it first. You Any discussion? Second. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving payroll warrant 2331 for one thousand five hundred fifty-two dollars and nineteen cents. Signify by saying aye. Aye. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Motion passes. You can sign this. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> My next uh, motion here would be to I'd like to make a motion to approve accounts payable warrant twenty-three thirty. Dated February 1st, 2023, in the amount. Uh, let me just, hold on, there's a page missing. It's shifted over, actually. It's on the same page, but. Oh, okay. Five, eight, six, one, two, three. $5,861.23. Correct. Okay, may I have a second? Seconded by Bruce Mello. Any discussion? I have one. I am going to recontact Judy about the differences of paying an invoice and paying the statement amount because she's still paying the invoice and we're carrying over on Brattleboro Salvage. Uh -huh. So I made a note on that. Okay, any other questions? Hearing none, all those in favor of approving accounts payable warrant 2330. For the amount of five thousand eight hundred sixty-one dollars and twenty-three cents, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passes. I'll send this around for your signature.
setting the agenda for the February 15th, 2023 meeting. I have on here the town meeting, such as the potluck. We also may want to uh, reach out to our moderator and talk to him, uh, talk to him about uh, the, the going over a couple of things. He emailed me today oh. asking for a copy of the warrant because I had emailed him about the upcoming seminar through VLCT for moderators and sent him a copy of the advertisement for it to him. Uh, and I pointed out to him the fact that he's probably going to see something for the first time. And there's a special term and way of handling it. And he'd want to know that. But today he emailed me, and I sent that last week. Today he emailed me, said, can you send me a copy of the town warrant? Because I want to familiarize myself with the warrants that you're discussing. And uh, I so I did that. And I said to him that you had and I had copies of stuff from VLCT that he might want to read and or attend the seminar. And if he wanted that, let one of us know. Okay. So, so, and he did say in his email, he did want to meet with one or both of us about that issue, about the-, the Just warning, going over, going over looking things. at some finessing yeah. points. Yeah. So, um, um, I, and I hope I didn't overstep my bounds. I just thought I'd no, save no. one email and no, that's fine. at the same time meet his immediate question. Okay. Um, I also will have on there, besides the town meeting, the potluck, the moderator, um, Vermont Trans, Trans Grant, the annual financial plan, uh, the RFP for the brick grant, the uh, reappraisal information, uh, and Bruce wanted some time. We'll, we could talk about ARPA again and any other items that you so desire. Uh, if there's nothing else, I will motion to adjourn this evening. Okay. Oh, we, we, we have a couple of minutes because I don't want to end early. No, because it ain't <laughs> started. <laughs> anything else? Hearing none, I'm going to adjourn the meeting. <laughs>